For centuries, automobiles have gone through humongous changes in terms of shape, size, power, speed, gear transmission, safety, luxury, autonomous capabilities, and much more. But the types of engines have not been changed much. The early vehicles had steam engines and then we moved on to internal combustion engines. We have been using the internal combustion engines in all the vehicles on land, water, and air. In recent times, we have been seeing a big shift of our mentality towards electric vehicles, even in space explorations. Are they really better? What are the advantages and disadvantages of electric vehicles? Are they safe? What are the things we should know before buying an electric vehicle? To get the answers for these questions, watch the video till the end. In the year 1698, the steam engine was invented. It was a big stepping stone for the humanity. Steam engines run using water steam, evaporated by heating the water, using fuels like coal, oil, or wood. Around the year 1860, the internal combustion engine was invented. From that time, the internal combustion engines have gone through lots of improvements and innovations. We have been using the internal combustion engines for more than a century. But still, this type of engines have their own disadvantages. It requires a lot of engineering effort to design and develop. Manufacturing cost is high. It has many and complicated moving parts. The combustion creates a lot of pollution to the air and releases many toxic substances, which are harmful to humans up to a great extent. The combustion produces a lot of sound. Despite of many disadvantages, we have been using this type of vehicle successfully until we started experiencing the fuel shortage. We have depleted most of the petroleum-based fuel reserves and the current fuel price is skyrocketing. To overcome this problem, humanity has to find an alternate source of energy, which can be electricity or nuclear. Here comes the era of electric vehicles. We have been using electricity for centuries. But why didn't we have electric vehicles before? Why not? We have been successfully running electric trains for several decades. What we lack here is the energy storage and utilizing the power efficiently. To solve this problem, batteries can be a perfect solution. Batteries have been evolving continuously in a faster pace. For several decades, we have been using batteries right from a small wristwatch to home inverter UPS. Ever since the lithium-based batteries came into production, the portability have been improved a lot, like laptops, cell phones, smart wearables, robotics, the list goes on. Even though the batteries have been evolving continuously, still there is no single type of battery suitable for electric vehicles to replace the internal combustion engine based vehicles entirely. However, the electric vehicles does exist in the market for a quite long time. Electric vehicles have numerous advantages than internal combustion engine based vehicles. Automobile companies are seriously into electric vehicles right now. With all this pressure and competition between the manufacturers to bring their products into the market as early as possible, are they really safe for the consumers? To understand this better, let's have a look into the types of batteries being used in electric vehicles and what are all the problems and risks they pose. Our first choice is lead acid battery. Lead acid batteries have high tolerance to temperature and discharge current. This is the main reason all the vehicles use this type of battery till now from powering up starter motor to all other devices in the vehicle. The major drawbacks of using lead acid batteries are it is heavy, the size is huge, it takes more time to charge, the storage capacity degrades faster, periodically we need to maintain the level of distilled water. Using a nuclear battery is fictional till now. Theoretically, one small size of nuclear battery can power up the car for more than 20,000 years. Think about the amount of energy the nuclear battery can have. One small mistake can cause a chain of explosion all around the world. It can even be an extinction level event for all living things on our planet. Ultra capacitors or super capacitors can be a major breakthrough in energy storage. Unlike the batteries, the supercapacitors can charge to its full potential almost instantly. It can also release very large amount of energy, but this technology is still getting improved in terms of size and storage. The cost is more as well. Even a car-sized supercapacitor cannot compete the storage capacity of lithium-based batteries. 
Many manufacturers are performing research and development to use hydrogen-based fuel cells. Currently, we do not have many positive information on this yet. So, finally, we have been left with the choice of choosing lithium-based batteries. Pay attention to this critical information. The things I am going to explain now might sound technical. Everyone should be aware of this when you buy any product with lithium batteries. I will try to explain it as simple as possible. Lithium ion batteries are commonly used in electric vehicles. These are lightweight, compact and efficient. It has high energy storage capacity, low in maintenance, more charge and discharge cycles. However, there are some major drawbacks with these type of batteries. Consumers should be very careful with the following details and ask these questions while buying an electric vehicle. What level of experience does the manufacturer have in making batteries? What level of guarantee does a manufacturer give to their consumers related to batteries and safety? It is better to get the battery data sheet with critical information such as operating voltage, charging and discharging protection, temperature tolerance, recycle procedure and safety measures. Already, we would have heard or seen more news almost every day about the electric vehicles catching fire or exploding. What causes this fire? Why not all the electric vehicles catch fire? The answer lies within the quality of the batteries and its controller circuits, which a manufacturer decided to use. Lithium ion batteries should be operated in a range of 5 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. If the battery temperature goes above or below this range, the battery will degrade faster and will not perform as expected. The battery temperature can go beyond 45 degrees Celsius due to improper charging, high current discharge, cumulative ambient temperature and physical damage. Even if the weather in your location is 40 degrees Celsius, when the car is parked under the direct sun, the temperature inside the car will be more than the ambient temperature as the heat is trapped inside the car. The cumulative heat trapped inside the car can be more than 50 degrees Celsius. This is more dangerous to lithium ion batteries and can lead the batteries to explode. When the battery temperature is already high and if we try to move the car, the battery temperature can raise furthermore, which can lead to battery explosion. The nominal voltage level of lithium batteries is 3.7 volts. The operating voltage ranges from 3 volts to 4.2 volts per cell. The charging voltage for a single cell should be 4.2 volts. Can you guess what will happen if we charge a cell with voltage more than 4.2 volts? You're right, explosion. Lithium batteries requires constant voltage and constant current to charge to its full potential. Some chargers will top up the charge with a low current, which is called as trickle charge. The storage capacity is described as milliamp per hour. This describes how many hours the battery can provide output. This means the battery rated with 2000 mAh can provide 2 amperes of current for the load for 1 hour. With a single cell of 3.7 volts and 2000 mAh battery, we could not even run a toy car for hours. So, to power the electric vehicles, we need a pack of batteries connected together. This is how it is connected. If the batteries are connected in series, the output will be the sum of battery voltage, but the current remains constant. If the batteries are connected in parallel, the voltage remains the same, but the current will sum up. To get the desired voltage and current for an electric car motor, several batteries are connected in series and parallel in the same circuit. We should not charge these batteries altogether simply by connecting the charger. In a battery pack, each battery cell will have its own charging capacity. What will happen if one or more batteries are faulty and does not charge to its full potential? The charger simply will try to read the final voltage of the entire battery pack but not the individual battery voltage. The batteries that are perfect will be charged to its full potential and the batteries that are faulty cannot reach to its full capacity. The charger can read only the final voltage and will continue the charging. The batteries that are already charged to full now will continue to overcharge. Can you guess? Brilliant! The explosion! So, to charge a battery pack, it requires a special electronic device or a circuit called the Battery Management System or BMS. While charging, the BMS module will charge each battery cell individually with 4.2 volts. This is called balance charging. The BMS will cut off the charging to the batteries which are already full. A BMS should also monitor the battery temperature while charging. 
and cut off the charging if the battery temperature is more than the tolerance value. If the BMS has a design flaw or faulty, it will lead the batteries to explode. The BMS shall be responsible to cut off the output when a battery is reached below its minimum voltage. Usually it is 3 volts. When lithium batteries are discharged below this level, it loses its ability to store the charge. Sometimes it may not get charged again. We can call these batteries as dead batteries. The discharging capability of the batteries are usually specified like 1C, 2C, 10C and so on. If a battery is rated as 1C and its capacity is 2000 mAh or 2AH, then the discharge current is 1 times of the charge capacity, which is 2 amps. In certain situations, when we try to draw the current more than its discharge rate, then the battery temperature will increase and might explode. This kind of situation may occur due to faulty motor, short circuits or when motor cannot pull the vehicle, when the wheels cannot move or stuck. Another great risk of exploding the batteries are by physical damage. When an electric vehicle is crashed, the enclosure of the battery pack should be strong enough to prevent physical damage to the batteries. Physical damage to the lithium-ion batteries will cause fire almost instantly. Passengers in that vehicle may not have time to escape from the fire. If all these factors that we have discussed so far are handled perfectly in a vehicle, then that particular vehicle can be safe from exploding the batteries. Otherwise, it is a ticking time bomb. Unlike the internal combustion engine, where the mileage of a tank full of petrol or diesel can be consistent throughout the vehicle's lifetime, but the lithium batteries can work well only within its charge and discharge cycle. Lithium batteries will lose its capacity to hold the charge every time we charge and discharge. So, if a vehicle is designed to run 400 km with its full charge, it may not be the same every day. Sooner or later, we might have to change the entire battery pack in order to get the maximum mileage. Even the degraded batteries generate lot of heat while charging or driving, which may lead the battery to explode. Let's say if all electric vehicles are perfect and everyone in the world are using it, powered by lithium batteries, then the cost of the battery pack may go high every day. Do we have sufficient lithium reserve to make more lithium batteries? What will be the cost of lithium batteries when lithium is in high demand? Another biggest challenge is we need more charging stations all over the places we visit. Charging the batteries in an electric vehicle can take hours. Some manufacturers are continuously improvising the fast charging capabilities, like from hours to minutes. Always we should be very cautious about the battery charge, battery health and the distance we travel. What can we do to recycle or dispose the dead batteries safely without polluting the environment and prevent adverse effects to humans? When entire world started using the electric vehicles, there will be more demand for electricity. Sooner or later, we may not have source to generate such high units of electricity. Many countries are already facing huge demand for coals. We may have to rely on nuclear energy and other renewable energies to generate electricity. Currently, the electricity price per unit may be cheaper than petrol or diesel, but sooner the electricity price may go high. With this demand in fuel, electricity and lithium, buying a vehicle in the future may cost a fortune. Also, the owner should be ready to spend much more on the regular service, maintenance and insurance. I wish humanity shall find many energy sources in the grey area between lithium batteries and nuclear. Now, you will have question in mind, can we buy electric vehicles or not? Yes, we can buy if we can maintain the battery health by following all the safety measures. We can buy if the manufacturers can produce the vehicle with all safety in place to prevent lithium battery explosion. We can buy if we have sufficient lithium resource and source of electricity. Despite of all issues with batteries and energy sources, electric vehicles have more advantages and environment friendly than internal combustion engine based vehicles. Unlike the internal combustion engines, the electric vehicle does not have such a high quantity of moving parts. So, the performance and efficiency of an electric motor will be better than the internal combustion engines. The manufacturing effort and cost would be very less. Air pollution will be reduced drastically. Electric vehicles does not produce more sound like internal combustion engines. People may start generating electricity on their own using solar panels and other renewable resources. I have created this content based on my knowledge and assumptions. So what do you think about owning an electric vehicle? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Be wise while choosing an electric vehicle and be safe. Don't forget to subscribe this channel for more informative and interesting contents. Thanks for watching.